A minute ago, I shared a video with you guys talking about three years on the longest road in the world, driving from South America all the way to the USA. That video blew up, and I'm stoked to have so many of you subscribe for the next adventure, but amigos, that was only half of the story. There is another 30,000 miles and about three years of my life. The drive to the Arctic was eventful, to say the least, just wait until you see what happens. You might want to buckle up for this. It's one heck of a ride. So you remember that time that I first set foot in the USA? I'd been driving north in that combi that I bought in Chile for three years, and I finally made it to America, and it wasn't long before we found ourselves on Californian TV news. Even my Peruvian sidekick got a whole segment on the local news when she got lost, and then she got sick like really sick almost died actually but that's another story people saw us on the news and came from far and wide to meet us and bring us gifts it was nuts leah flew up and returned to the combi you remember leah right I showed her that it is indeed possible to have adventures in the USA on $10 a day. I mean, this is combi life. We never stay in hotels. We always shower outside. And sometimes we have to eat snails for dinner. Incredibly, after all of that, she still wanted to stick around, but I kicked her out anyway, because I hadn't seen my family for literally years and I've finally convinced them to come and try van life. So this is the shower. Oh, lovely. I'm gonna be showering with this tomorrow. With, without, without video, I hope. That's what they subscribe for. Don't forget to click the combi to subscribe. Because you never know where we're gonna be or who we're gonna wake up with. After years apart, we did two weeks living on top of each other. We completed a huge tour of California and I got to show them just how incredible my lifestyle really is. Good morning, any other bright ideas for today? <laughs> In all seriousness though, I'm a full-time traveler, a citizen of the world. The sacrifice I make for my adventures is time away from the people that I love. And that is a hefty price to pay. Human connection just isn't the same when it's through a screen. Double tap that. About the time I was getting all emotional saying goodbye to my family once again, I took my eye off the weather and the seasons only went and changed on me. Winter was coming. It was cold in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Why the hell am I going north? There was no way that I could make it to Alaska. Not this year. Plan B, Mexico. Somehow I managed to convince this girl who I'd never actually met to move in with me and into my tiny mobile home and escape into the Mexican desert for the winter. My mate David joined Tara and I and we pushed further south into the desert. We picked up some gas from the locals and then proceeded to get stuck. Yeah, really stuck. There's something quite character building about getting stuck in the middle of nowhere, out of cell service and miles from anyone. You wouldn't make that mistake twice. Oh, okay, well, never mind. Tara and I pushed on into Baja and moved in with some local fishermen for a while. They taught us that it is indeed possible to eat fish every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that seafood is best consumed whilst it's still moving. <laughs> but eat quickly, too quick. Too quick. <laughs> they also taught us everything that we now know about fishing, including how to catch octopus. That was fun. They even taught us how to kill it. Wow, not so fun. And paint a sign using ink from the octopus as paint and use cigarette butts as brushes. No, I'm not kidding. And no, we didn't know that we were going to be doing that when we woke up that day. Christmas was spent as it usually is in a combi, cooking a bird over an open fire and enjoying the view. On the border of the tropics, two things happened. First, Tara left. And second, I turned my compass to north one final time. Now I was gonna drive to the Arctic. Or so I thought. I spent my last day in Mexico enjoying a free surfside camp and I woke to a surprise visit from a T1 of Volkswagen Club. Before I could even mutter the words, hola amigos, 
I was adopted by the club and found myself living in a Volkswagen Mechanics, not for the first time, I might add. The Baja Volks Club pulled my engine out. This was in fact the 10th time on this one road trip. Yay! But that was only because they would not let me leave until they had fixed all the problems I didn't yet know I had and were sure that I could make it all the way to Alaska trouble free. Mexicans are awesome. They searched every corner of Tijuana to find the parts we needed and insisted that I consume every dish of Mexican food ever invented. Viva Mexico! Whoa, hang on, what? You're still not subscribed? Hit that red button. Arriving back in California, I continued my mission north doing ride shares with other travelers. <laughs> I love this dog. Sara from Finland discovered Combi Life on YouTube and flew in to join the adventure for a week and only ended up staying for three months. She completed her law degree in the back of the bus while traveling. She is a legend. Sara was also put in charge of finding more combi crew members and somehow she found another Finnish girl. So there I was living in my bus with a dog and two Finnish girls. It's like winning the lottery. <laughs> or so I thought. <laughs> but wait, it gets better than another girl joined us, this time a doctor from Estonia. Man, that was a highlight. So there I was crossing the Golden Gate Bridge, you should have seen the smile on my face. Oh look, you can. That smile lasted about another five minutes until we went around the corner and the girls literally fell out of the combi. That wasn't a highlight. By Northern California the girls were fully into combi life and the spoon train was full steam ahead. Into the majestic redwoods we went and there we made memories that will stay with me for life. I made a huge mistake at this point. I left Sara in charge of who was coming into the combi for just a little bit too long. Yes, things have certainly changed in the combi this week. In Oregon I saw some of the worst bogs I've ever seen, but also woke up to one of the best views I've ever seen anywhere in South, Central and North America. I also started breaking down again and not for the first time, a bunch of random American strangers came to my rescue. Next up we got invited into a real life American home, fell in love with the family and the town of Bend. Damn, Bend, Oregon has it going on. Short on time, we sprinted to the Canadian border, grabbing a bath in a tree trunk on the way. We hosted a few more travelers, stripped the combi of everything that wasn't needed, and saw wild orcas. That was also a highlight. A minute in Seattle, and we entered into Canada. We celebrated my 15th country on this road trip by, yep, you guessed it, picking up more hitchhikers. One of them was Leah. You remember Leah. Watch what happens in the next part. Somehow we managed to have a run in with the local lawn, not once, not twice, but three times in the first week on Vancouver Island. But finding a plane in the forest made us forget all about that. The engine broke down again, no surprises there. I managed to fix it with chewing gum, even I was surprised there. We started leaking petrol whilst driving through forest fires, not cool beefed up our fire protection, but that wouldn't help us for what was about to happen. I really enjoyed that combi crew, but then they all left, including Sara, but not Leah. No way. Crossing into Alberta, we found this girl living in a bus with her now ex-boyfriend and managed to convince her to come and stay with us for adventures in the Canadian wilderness. Alaska the dog got stared down by an elk, but lived to tell the tale. We got to play cowboys and cowgirls in the Canadian Rockies and led the horses to pasture from the back of the combi. I've got to be honest, that was also a highlight. Managed to convince these two crazy kids to jump in with us and tackle the world famous Alaska Highway and jump in they did. Many miles, a puncture, a minor engine meltdown, lots of cool wildlife. All right, not all of it was cool. A minute in a hot spring, a few mandatory tourist attractions, at least one forest fire, and finally we made it to the Alaskan border. And this is where it gets really interesting, but honestly, what happened in the last 1000 miles of this adventure 
deserves a video all of its own. Thank you so much for joining us for this adventure and I hope we get to see you in the next one. Until then, happy travels.